Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson, and this is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. And tonight, we will be reviewing The King's Daughter that was released this year in 2022. <clears throat> and the reason this one was... Um, it, this one was going to be released in 2015, but there was a bit of... Um, financial difficulties with um, investors and stuff. And yeah, and yeah, that sort of stuff. And so this movie was on the shelf uh, on the shelf for seven years. Well, it took a few years to get into it too. Mm, true, and it got took, people interested. Again. No, well, originally uh, when they're getting it started, uh, uh, the earliest development started in 1999. They mm-hmm. went on on for there on often people talking about it, kicking the idea around, and deals yeah. were cut and. Jim Hansen's company was brought into it, yeah, and somebody else mm. were, and then it dropped off the planet, and then it came back on again, and yeah, yeah there was a lot of, <coughs> yeah. um, uh, there was even a thought of doing it back in say when was it? Mm, let me see, there was thought about doing the film. They were getting the film rights back in 1999. Oh, you said and, that. And of course, uh, yeah, no, uh, and <laughs> well, it just I guess um, I just. Change of opinions didn't really work out really well. Yeah, well, it's something yeah. Did. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got to admit though, d- if <coughs> things Disney, just didn't come together. If yeah. Disney did um did it, I think he, they could have done an interesting job of, out of it, maybe. Oh, well, whatever. Anyway, just man. Anyway, um, so anyway, um, this is the movie we're doing, and it's a fantasy. Now, and now this is a really, 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 really new film. <laughs> It's actually, it's at the stage I can't even find too much information on it in so far as box office because it's still a box office thing at the stage uh, on the internet. Uh, <laughs> so it hasn't caught up yet. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. Even though it's slowly being released for home release, it's on Amazon Prime, but hasn't not you can't buy a copy at the moment. It's out of stock, which means there's no stock to buy eBay doesn't have stock yet, so it's mm-hmm. so new. Yeah, so the box office figures I've got are probably a bit dated. Yeah, how we ago. found it, it's a miracle. We're talented. Mm. Okay, we we have ways of making you talk. <laughs> or at least ways to finding things. As I've said in the past, guys, there is no movie out there that we have not sought or seeked. No, 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 that we'll only review a movie. No, obviously we'll only re- re- review a movie we've seen, but we'll only review a movie that we believe you can get a copy of. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because obviously, if we get a really, truly, really old movie, we may have to actually download the torrent, but there's no good us getting it and saying, hey, this is a good movie, if you can't get it. Hmm. So we don't do those at movies. Yeah, but yeah, in this yeah. case, we yeah. made this an exception, yeah. because this one has a something... <clears throat> An interesting storyline, I might like bit, to yeah, it's, it's interesting. interesting sets of actors. And William Hurt is alive in this one. And that's what <laughs> He's alive will... in this one. I, yeah. I, he, and he as, the mummy, wasn't yes, he? Yeah, and yeah, as yeah. you well know, he died this month, Yeah, yeah sadly. this year. Uh, about last month, and, I think, or something. And yeah. I think this is a good time he to well, review yeah. this movie to honour his memory. Exactly right. Thing. Actually, it's quite funny. He wasn't going to get the role. Really? Hmm. Uh, Bill Nye, he was going to get the role. But due to commitment, Bill Nighy couldn't do the role, mm. so they offered to William Hurt. Yeah, Is that love? So Actually, Bill had done a good job. I, I, Bill, I like Bill Nighy. He's got some, you know, something way, some of his personality, the way he talks, I really don't know. But there's something about him I think he is really smooth. I, the first time I saw him, or noticed him, was in the boat that rocked. He was the guy in charge of the boat. My and opinion. he was really cool. I said, oh, I could grow old gracefully yeah. like that. Yeah, That'd he be seemed very smooth and sophisticated. <laughs> Not bad for an old bloke. <laughs> but I do like William Hurt. Uh, he yeah. pulled it off for me in this role in a good way because he was, he pulled off being, he played a priest and he was a very good priest. He was nice and courteous. Well, very nice, and yes. he showed compassion. And, and, and a good advice to the king. Now, yes. okay, we've got a few things to get through. Now, this is really weird. Okay. The produced by list is almost as long as the cast. So I'll read through the names of all the producers. So oh there must gosh. be there must be investments and producers and exec producers. I don't know what's thrown in here. But anyway, mm. James Pan Hong. 
As I uh, said, the he, he, he to be part of the Chinese company who got invested, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Paul Curry, Wei Han, Sean McNamara. Sean's actually the, the, the director as well. Um, hmm. David Brookwell, Hong Pang, uh, even Wong, and I cannot, for the love of me, say this word properly, so Quing Fang Du, I think, oh is the right pronunciation. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, director by Sean McNamara. And you see why, guys, I often let Mike go for all uh, the names. I have to go for the all the funny names. And I'm not saying they're funny. I, just, I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak European languages. I've got no freaking idea. Now, anyway, mm -hmm. screenplay is by Barry Berman and James Seamus. It was based on a 19, believe it, 1997 novel. So they got the idea they want to make the movie straight away almost. Uh, yeah, right off the block. Yeah. Um, or right now off the, the novel was called The Moon and the Sun and it was written by Bonda and McIntyre. Mm. Now when I said about I couldn't get the figures yet, at the the budget was about forty million. Mm -hmm. But the box office is only a one point eight at the moment, but I don't know how old the figures are. Because mm. it's only just coming off the actual release now. Uh -huh. So I don't know. If the figures are two, three, four weeks old. So, mm. can't tell you. Yeah, can't tell you either, guys. Now, uh, as we said, William Hurt's role, um, as his final film, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was his final film. Uh, so, in the last two, th seeing as this movie was released, was going to be released yeah. in 2015. Um, yeah, you might have not have any sense, but this is the final movie released. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, yeah, but mainly. It's, in, it's partly in tribute to uh, William. He's been in quite a few interesting movies. I, I think I saw him in a couple of things. He played some guy of cancer and different things. But I did see him in Dark City, and that was a top movie. Yeah, he played, uh, I thought he played uh, a, top a, a role police in inspector or something. Mm. He, good, he, he, had a, he had a good way about him. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So and who else stars in this movie? Well, I think there's I a good. I haven't done the stars yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just mentioned that in passing. Um, right. right. Pierce Brosnan. Plays King Louis the uh, uh, my uh, yeah, my Roman numerals. Hang on, King uh, Louis the Fourteenth. Uh, no, he doesn't sing in this movie. Yes, yes. Yay. yeah. We Sorry, me, me and Mike yeah. don't don't like him singing in. No, he's a good looking um, guy. Mia. He's a good actor, but when he's in what Mamma Mia? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, he can't sing. Yeah, but yeah. He, yeah. Get actors, an embarrassment I, here. As I often yeah. say, guys. Get actors who can sing when you're doing a musical. Yeah. Or do not get, get some, someone who doesn't. Or get look. someone to do a voiceover or yeah. something. Yeah. Anyway. Anyone who has a singing talent in their brain, not someone that looks good to be a singer. He looks good. Anyway, girls Go like on. him. My mum liked him. Now, anyway, uh, I won't go for everybody here, but but Ka uh, Kaya Scodelario is. A, I hope that's the right pronunciation. Kaya, uh, she plays Marie Joseph. Uh, Marie Joseph. Mm. Uh, which is the king's daughter. Um, mm -hmm. um, now Benjamin Walker plays Ive Delacroix. Interesting thing about th th those two. Yeah. They're actually married in real life. Kay and Benjamin. Yeah, they're both well, married. There you they're, go, this then. is um, they're. This it does is the, make the love scenes more convincing, doesn't it? I guess mm. they do, and I kind of think I do. The thing is, this was done in 2014. I do wonder if they're still married together. Uh, no, it's quickly they go. Anyway, no. anyway Benji Wall, he plays Ive, Ive Delacroix. He's a boat captain who, um, well, he goes out to look for a mermaid. But anyway, we won't go. Wait. But he's the um, he's a love interest for the king's daughter. Oh, yeah, who's down he's here? Um, there's another. Um, well, William Hurt plays Father Francois Le Chase. Uh, um, da, da. Now, a lady called Fan. Bing Bing, okay, plays the mermaid. Mm. She is an attractive woman and she swims quite nicely. And now I don't know if now that's computer generated or what, mm, but I think it might looks be. totally convincing to me. Um, I think it's pure generated, whatever, or CGI. Well, she was part of it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, Ben Lloyd Hughes plays Jean Michel uh, Lintelac. He's a proposed hubby for the king's daughter. He's a real in other brat. words. He's a, I wouldn't marry him if I was a female. Yeah, I just usually call him the duke, obviously. He's a duck, yeah. Because he's he's, his character is, his father died, and he gets his He, he, he inherited his estate, and the king bestowed his father's title on his, uh, his surviving son. So he 
uh, can uh, carry on the family name and become a he, duke he, or a duck. Uh, yeah, a duck, a duke. He, <laughs> and get his, he wanted to marry his daughter off this guy so he can get his hands on his money. What a nice man. What yeah. a great father in law. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I won't go to anybody else, but I will mention one thing. Julie Andrews does the narration for the movie. Mm, what a great narrator she is. I've always loved Julie Andrews ever since I mm. first saw her in uh, Mary Poppins and I yeah. fell in love with her then and then several movies after that. She was really, really yeah. good. I think she There's was, something about her personality yeah. and voice. She also yeah. did the narration for Enchant, Enchanted. Enchanted. And it's, she was um, also, it was done in 2005. And she played the Queen in Princess Diaries yeah, and stuff. Yeah, she's beautiful. She just has something, something elegant about her, even though she talks and moves. Yeah, and well, yeah, it's so. those old types of yeah. actors who uh, go back many years they, yeah. that just have that royalty about them. They were still stately, stately or stately elegant. Stately, elegant or, yeah, look some, about them. It's something about the woman. She's, uh, I, I yeah. guess I, still, I feel the same way about Jane Seymour and, yeah. uh, and Roger... Roger Moore and well, Roger Sean Connery. Moore, I, yeah, I feel yeah. like sometimes they're like royalty when it comes yeah. to it. I know that well, some of them have their knighthoods and <laughs> stuff here and there. Well, some of them, some of them got OBEs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Roger, and moving Roger right Moore along. does. And yeah. so does Sean Connery. Well, that's a very, very nice. I haven't got one, but I'm not British. Not anyway. sure if Pierce Brosnan will ever get one. I'm not He's sure. not British. I thought he was. He's American. I thought he was English. No, he might have. No, I don't think he's ever been. I think he's always been um, American. I think I think he was born in America. He got a softer accent, hmm. but he was born in America. But yeah, oh. but no, he's English. He's not English. He's American. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway okay. Anyway. Um, plot. Take it away, Grizzly. So the story <laughs> begins where um, it takes place with um, the king who's just came back from a horrible war and it's probably wasted their financial problems. Yeah, a bit strapped for cash. Yeah. And he nearly gets assassinated by a man in the pub, in, pub, in public. And fortunately for him, he um, realises that he's not, he's, he's not immortal or he's vulnerable. So he has to he find... He ain't a, Superman. So yeah. he has to find a way to cheat death by becoming immortal. Yes. So he organises his... Um, a, a captain and his scientist guy to find a source no, no, of likely. Let's take thing. it back one step. This <laughs> doctor guy or whatever he is tells him about a way to make him more than one catch if they use the heart of a mermaid mm. and sacrifice it and take it out of a body and everything on the day of the eclipse and stuff and mm. all those other guru things. Yeah. Uh, and they he he has a way of making him an immortal. Yeah. So he sends this guy off to go find the mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so while this is happening, the um, king's daughter, her name is um, Marie something like that. Just call, just call her Marie. Yeah, yeah, Marie. I won't go through the yeah. French Marie names. Marie Joseph. It sounds too complicated. And she's obsessed with swimming in water. She's a free thing. spirit. And of course, the nuns who are raising her think that this is sacrilegious. Put your habit back on again. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. she's not a, a she nun. She was wearing she... a habit like a neophyte or whatever you call it uh, yeah. before you become a nun. Anyway, yeah, yeah. they just um, yeah. they they frown upon the idea that yeah. she should go swimming. They think it's unsacred. You they shouldn't sacrilege. be exposing your body. Well, she, wasn't, she still had a slip on or something. Or yeah, right, she's wearing know. her underwear. And there was no men around. Technically, no. Well, it wasn't um, except for the thorn crew. And the fish. <laughs> Sorry. And the fish. A man fish. Nemo was there. Yes, yeah, so and, uh, she's invited to be, I guess, um, to be part, you know, to ta be, to, to, to go to court or be part of court. The story is that she was uh, an accomplished musician. Yes. And she was going to be taken to the uh, Palace of Versailles to do some music for the, the king, king uh, for some celebration or something or other. Yeah, on the but, eclipse. Oh, but the, that was a pretext. But she didn't know. She is the um, daughter to the, the king, king. so yeah. she's taken. She's William Hurt, the priest guy, Chase, whatever his name is. Um, he takes her in his in the coach and drives and drives her down to the um, facade, whatever. You can't trust a priest too, can you trust him? But he's a nice priest. He's, he's a nice guy. He, the father he, image. He treats her respectfully when he actually when you think about it. 
And the king himself in this movie, he's not respectful when I think about this. No, he's a bit of a sleazebag in some ways. Yeah, no, no disrespect selfish. for Pierce Brosnan, whoever No, he's are. the role he's playing. Yeah, he's yeah. selfish, he's self-absorbed, yeah. everything else. Think yeah, of yeah. Um, James Bond if he's a sole sleazebag. No, he doesn't. I just mean bond on the sleeves bag. No, no, I meant like I just meant the opposite to James oh, Bond, oh, like where James Bond, of course, is very um, slick and a good. Yeah, and and he cares about all females he sleeps with. Yeah, but in this case, <laughs> he, the King Louis, in this one, he's a total sleaze at sleeping with every single woman that walks on two legs. Yep. Yeah. And he can and he confides Naughty. to his uh, priest confesses to them um, my previous sins. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I sat with someone last night and the priest said, you're forgiven. Yeah. And one time during the movie he says, um, I couldn't remember his I can't fling. remember what I did last night. Uh, you know, you're forgiven. <laughs> so, he must have had a good night. He must have been drunk as a skunk. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodness yeah. gross. Anyway. Nothing's luck. Yeah, he, he, yeah. He's a king. At yeah. first, the um, uh, Maria is um, in, taken to the servants' quarters or the lack of one. Well, not servants' quarters. It's more of a back. It's just a, um, a very disgusting room, and she does eventually meet the king. And this is on the king's birthday, That's and this is, birthday. and this is where we're introduced, but to the duke, who's or not duke. I mean, what would you call a guy before he becomes duke? Oh yeah, a, vi- a viscount or a viscount. Yeah, that used to be a good cigarette. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, that's that's Countess. I mean, sorry. Oh, what? I'm sorry, he, guys. He, he, I'm bad he, for royalty. he was not a duck yet. He was a. Uh, it was ducky. <laughs> he was a duckling. Yes. Oh, oh. Okay. A dukeling. Yeah, <laughs> and he's smitten by Marie. He was smote. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and the king put decides to put Marie in better quarters. The um, first. Nice room. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really nice. Big. Big room, dresses, and some Big nice... Big the bed, you know, the and, usual, the usual and some fight. nice yeah. instruments. There's a harp, there is a cello, there's some... Electric guitar, oh no, no, Rob, Rob Beard. Yeah, yeah, there, there are some interesting dresses in this movie. They look like the dresses I could probably see modern women wearing now. No, some no. Of them. They, they, were, they were very elegant dresses, but they had... Some of them had a modern feeling yeah, to them. that's what I mean. I mean, I could probably yeah. see them walking down a fashion show mm. and some of them I could probably look at buying in but shops yeah, but yeah but some some styles don't change too much true yeah. true anyway, moving right along yes yeah, so um the king's um cap the uh, ship's captain guy arrives and he brings the creature and this creature is a female mermaid obviously well the, yeah see uh so they actually caught her and her husband boyfriend. Mm-hmm. or boyfriend or partner or whatever uh, yeah, they but only they let him go because yeah. they only wanted the female. Yeah, one. something about the female. I don't know why they just think it's... they're the more mystic- mystical ones whose hearts work better. Well, yeah, see, they the 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 way they're trying, they're gonna find take out the bit in her heart. They take out the body yeah. heart, yeah, yeah. and, and they do something to it, yeah, and put, you know, cook it up on a barbecue or do. I don't or know what to do with it, or even eat it. So you, you know. What is it? Cook it on a barbecue. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yum, I remember yum, yum, in yum, yum. Stardust, they they when they did that mo- other movie, it did with with um previous the other actors where they said they try to take out the star his heart in order to become immortal. So this might be the very same the thing. Same sort of thing. Yeah, no, the same sort of plot. Yeah. 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 Sure. So anyway, um, she's put in a special area where she has to. Guess um, you know get better because she tra- they were traveling and the experience has left her drained and weary and ex- and very the poor fishy. Yeah, they fed her dead fish. They were dying. You want live fish? Yeah, I mean this is a living creature and she eats from the water, meaning that she eats whatever comes up her way. That it's whether it's dead or whatever it's alive. Well, no, she didn't she grabs it, she catch a live fish and eat it. Exactly. No, not a dead fish. Look, look, look at Dracula. Mm. Okay, he is supposed to drink living blood, not dead blood. Mm. You drink dead blood, it's bad for him. Yeah, true. Because we saw that in uh, Anne Rice's movie, the uh, in uh, interview of a vampire or something. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, came out more in that movie that if you had if you drink the blood of a dead creature, mm. uh, it's like poison on it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, consider yeah. the um, animal kingdom guys. I mean, uh, they. They would hunt um, living creatures. I don't know what would happen if they eat a, um, a dead, cre- already dead creature. Well, decayed. I would need a live one. But we're I don't different. think they'll eat it. To be honest, I, I would. I would need a live one. Hmm. Hey, cat. 
Where are you? <laughs> but then again, I could, I'm, I could be wrong because we often eat dead things and well, we, we cook them. And we cook them. We cook them. We, we, we put them out of the misery. So I don't feel the cooking process, mm. and um, yeah, considering we yeah. often cook lobster, and that and no, then we and that's and that's actually a, cooking a lobster is a bit different. It, the best way to cook a lobster or a crab is to get them alive, put them into a pot of uh, of cold water, mm. and then bring the temperature up gradually mm. until it cooks them. They don't they, they don't na- notice the heat change. Okay, thank you, Julie Child. <laughs> if you throw one into boiling water, it really, really hurts. So they, wow. if yeah. you're going to eat them, be nice and merciful about it. Yeah, so back to the story. Right. Now, um, as um, Marion is trying to create some good music for the king, she's <laughs> like... A... No. Are you finished? Smoke on water? No. Anyway, oh, okay. she's lack of inspiration. So she hears the mermaid crying and... Softly whimpering, and so and she sees it as music. So she heads down to the secret area, and she p- brings her cello with her and starts playing. And it's she communicating. Ru- and she meets the the captain there, who's trying to feed dead fish to it. And he didn't, doesn't understand how this the sounds the mermaid's making is musical, because he probably heard it so many times and thinks it's not really musical. <laughs> Are you sick of it? It's like you're the same song over and over again. It's like, yeah, yeah. Because he's used to hearing whale noises, um, probably um, dolphins making noises. Yeah. Like, like, like flipper? Yeah. yeah, stuff like that. Even though I do think whale noises sound very, very soothing, depending well, on yes, the whale. Well, I've heard of it, whale, whale music. Uh, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. It's very pretty. Whale song, yeah. So she plays it the next day for the king, and the king is enchanted, even forgot his past sin, as Mike said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he offers to have her attend a ball, a royal ball thing. So she gets preparate, prep, prepped up, yep. and, really good too, and everyone Rest. is curious about her. Like, they're <laughs> thinking maybe she's a mistress to the king. Maybe she's... Um, cause, no one knew. Because the king, as we said before, he's not... Get into anyone's pants. Yeah. yeah. He even shows uh, her how to dance the waltz, I think. Well, yeah, she never danced before. So yeah. he, he showed her, I'll show you how to dance. And he did his fr- piss. He must have taken uh, lessons. He must have been yeah. dancing with the stars or something. Eh? Even yeah. the ducky, the duke, whatever his name is, um, is, <laughs> uh, is, um, oh, is practically enchanted by oh, her. Oh, he's a duck now. He, he, he's been made into a duck now. Yeah. Because yeah. later on, yeah. we find out his dad's dead and so he's transformed into a duck to a duke yeah yeah, yeah so a duck to a duke and he got all the money from his daddy yeah and yeah, yeah. the plot does stick in here yeah mm-hmm. yeah he doesn't have a good relationship with the captain as it turns out as mike will explain it to you well the problem is uh, the captain's telling stories to the yeah. king about their adventures out yeah. at sea and yeah. everything and he yeah. makes a an offhand remark. Oh, I wouldn't have known that word. Yeah, see, you know, they you had. Know, um, on, they were facing yeah. some barracudas. Yeah, and, attacking the boat. Lots and of big, they big either pack had. Of them. Yeah, and the captain's decision was to try to get away. And save his men. And save his men. Yeah. But the Duke doesn't think that they should have fought. Oh, they should out. have stayed there and fought them off. Yeah, they would have, yeah, yeah. They would have all died. Mm. There was a whole big school of them there. And, they, and, and that's, I, I believe they're um, very vicious when they're um, active. Mm. And they do eat meat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so he who fights and runs away lives, lives to fight another day. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And Marion does eventually find out more yeah. of a b- bigger backstory to why he doesn't like the Duke very much. As it turns out, his father, who was sent the, 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 dead, the dead Duke. The dead Duke. <laughs> um, he sent the captain and his men to... Some country. Some country. To take some goods over there. And unfortunately, the person at the other end didn't pay them. And then he, he, he accused the captain of the ship, yeah. of whatever his name is, Delacroix, uh, of stealing the money, and he put him in jail for a while. Yeah. Nice family. No one bothered to check whether the other guy actually paid well, or not. Well, as I said before, Mike, uh, these people, the aristocrats the, there, they back then probably did, even now, probably um, dodged the authorities. 
What the hell's the point? Yeah, I and I'm accusing that one person is not really a right thing to he do. He who is without sin casts the first stone. Hang on, rather. Anyway, Mary, and may, yeah. Mary uh, um, gets close to the mermaid, and at one point she ends up breaking her arm during a horseback ride with the captain. She yeah. and the captain have also been getting close, too. <laughs> you know, get my meaning. And we we that's not say no more. Of course, she broke her arm during um, um, her time with the with the, cap, the captain, and it was because of uh, stu- these guys who were cl- duck shooting. The was duke she... was with them. He's a bad shot. <laughs> yeah, not wrong. He, he, he could... missed one. Ah. I mean, you know, you, see, you couldn't hit the side of a barn, that sort of thing. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. If you wanted to be really, really safe, you'd stand right next to the barn. You have no worries oh. being shot there. Nah. Yeah. yeah, anyway, she, the doctor tells her that her hand has to be amputated or removed. Yeah, no, I have to take your arm off. The, the bone yeah. is gone repair. Meaning she will never play the cello again. And she loves the music. Yes, she does. She lives for it. Next to water, anyway. Yeah. So, um, the captain and the and priest. the priest, they come up with a plan to take her to the mermaid, and maybe the mermaid might help her. No, they, no, they, they can't, no, yeah, we have, no. firstly, I think the father, the, the king, and the priest say, let's wait till tomorrow and see how it goes. Then after daddy leaves, then the captain and the priest decide to take her to the mermaid because they believe... She has mystical powers. Yeah, so they lower yeah. the yeah. Um, um, Maria into the water, mm. and we uh, we observe yeah. a, a bright yellow goldy. or goldy light abs- going yeah. around. Yeah, she swims around really fast and stuff, and mm. this golden light comes out, and lo and behold, behold her arm is it's healed. healed. I mean, not in a cast, kiddies. I'm talking about ew, Yeah, the next real. morning... She's back playing music yeah, with her um, lunch. Warrior, her yeah. Yeah, 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 and the doctor looks over her arm and says that the mermaid's healing powers it's, it's, is it's been proven. Is proven true. So now we can kill her. Well, anyway, well wait before we get to that. Oh, yeah. um, the it's king perfect. makes out that he only brought the mermaid over because to heal the mer- some parts of France. Some people from France. Yeah, but it was selfish. He wanted it for himself. Yeah. Because he wanted to become be- a mortal. Yeah, she believes... He wanted to become a mortal, become a vampire for crying out loud. Yeah, so yeah. she believes that's the reason the mermaid is here. And she thinks that by the time the mermaid's done her job, she would return to the ocean. Nah, I ain't gonna have it. Uh, yeah, and this is where the king, he approaches the duke and tells him, Guess what? I have a daughter. Her name, You may have known her. Marion. And we want you. I want you to marry her. And the Duke is delighted. Oh, look, he, 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 look he, mm. he, he's not. He's, he, he's not no Tom Cruise. I'll tell you right no, now. No, he's a total jerk. He's, he, he's, he's a, a total he, duck he, or ducky. Ah, uh, oh, he's not even a duck. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a piece. Of, he's a piece of scum. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Anyway, yeah. the king tells Marie to come to his chambers, or to his office, I should say. Sorry. Well, his chambers, don't, get, get, don't get you wrong. Not and, that chamber, the other chamber. And yeah. he gives her the full truth. She was the um, project of him and his previous g- girlfriend's um, lovey bump dump daughter. Yeah, but she got pregnant, and, and, and she spirited us. And I think she left. I don't think he sent her one. I think she went off to the mon- uh, the nunnery. Yeah. So uh, mm. yeah. So yeah. Um, she was spirit. She spirited herself away to the nunnery where she gave birth and died. Sadly, yeah, in, and, during childbirth, and the nuns raised. And the king has kept closer tabs on on the, the um the, his daughter. He never sent her any birthday presents. No, darling. How rude! And he then, of course, she's delighted that the news that she that he's her dad. But then he drops the huge bomb on her, the bomb that she's now going to marry this dude the, creep, the, the little creepy guy. And uh, and then she finds out later on he's going to call mermaid. The, she doesn't like that very yeah, much. See, all, the, yeah, see, she finds out this by the captain who wanted to find out for himself why they're, they're, they bought the mermaid in the first place. He finds some sketches that belong to the doctor that indicate that, that they were going to cut open the mermaid yeah. and take out her the heart. The, the heart. And this, this very sketches he gives to Marie... And he gets thrown in jail for it because she was um, under lock and key because of the king. He yeah. thinks that she'll flee well, during she the marriage. If she flees. I mean, it's going to leave. Yeah, you'll flee. Yeah, yeah. See, the king planned yeah. on getting her married on the day of the, the eclipse. 
Which Isn't today, that... Danny was going to become an immortal. Yeah, talk about a double... Um, double whammy, whammy. A, a double celebration. I'm going to become an immortal, my wife, my girl's being married yeah, off to this really handsome guy, and I'm going to steal all his money off him. And, mm. um, yeah, yeah what a drag. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so she gets wind of this, and she makes a bargain with the king, tell him um, she'll marry the duke, or the duck. <laughs> and 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 then she'll and as provided that the, the the king let loose the mermaid. And he says, I don't, I don't bargain. No bargains. Kings don't bargain. Not in this case. Nah. <laughs> and he just waves her off and says, "Go off and get prepared for this wedding." So the musketeers yeah, yeah, grow, drag her back, yeah, yeah. sorry ass, back to her room, where yeah, drag the, her bums back. Yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah, yeah. the wedding dress is already there, waiting for her to be put on. Of course, she's wearing black, like you were ready for a funeral. Well, so a funeral. <laughs> Well, sorry. I would say that myself. I did. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. So, and <laughs> the captain was is or, is ordered out of the prison, and <laughs> he's told by himself by the king to or the scientist guy to drain the um, lake where the where, where the mermaid yeah, is, the lake, lake so they the, can get at her pallets, because yeah. it's still difficult getting at her because she's always swimming at the bottom of the yes, water. Yes, getting away from everybody. So yeah, they put a ladder in there and go get her. Yeah. Yeah. While this is happening. Um, with the help of the priest, who the priest is objecting to this idea of murdering the he mermaid. He thinks God's creatures and he appears to be intelligent, so he, he, it, killing it is tantamount to being yeah. uh, a murder, not yeah. just killing, killing yeah. a fish. Yeah, to yeah. Um, the priest, this is going to send the king to hell. Yeah. Or his soul to hell, anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever. Bits and pieces of him. Yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, he helps Marie get out of her room. And pretends that she's going off to confess to God, you know, to him. But actually, she runs back to the to the secret um, area where the mermaid is kept, and she finally convinces the captain that she does not love the dookie. She likes the him. Ca- the him. Oh, and it, lovely. And the and he tells his men to get to their boat, their ship, and get ready for sailing immediately. While they, while the captain and Marie. They get their get themselves organised to get the mermaid into the to the lake to into the lagoon and out of the yeah. of there. So really, get the motor running. Yes, yeah, yeah. Anyway, they the only way they could get the mermaid out of there is by getting the water pump, pumping the water from the from the from the the fountains upstairs, upstairs yeah, yeah. in the um in the king's yeah. um. To raise the water level downstairs. To, yeah. to get the water pouring in there, even though that would mean the pipes might Might easily break, break or yeah. or burst. So, but luckily enough, they, they were able to do this and convince the mermaid that to jump. Oh, over by the way, the, the, thing. The, the, the mermaid doesn't actually understand English or talk in his face. He works by telepathy. Yeah, she so does. So she understands what's going on. Yeah, so. I did like the bit where she convinces the captain to kiss Marie, and that come point, on, give us another one. I yeah. think it's romantic. Eventually, the doctor hears that that's what's happening, and he heads down there with two musketeers and tries to kill the captain and Marie. And while he's trying, he shoots the, cap, the captain. He's injured, and he falls into the water. And he and the and the doctor tries to fight Marie off, but eventually he gets um, well, um, caught up and killed. Yeah. Well, it's, it's he. So he got the better of him, and he dies. He drowns. And Eventually, the mermaid jumps from the from the small lagoon and into the, um, the waiting the, the, waters the, the, on the, the other the end. The water course, which brings the water in, but and she takes the sea captain guy Ives with yeah. her to heal him outside. Yeah. Mm. While this is happening, the wedding, the people are waiting in anticipation for this. Up- Someone's been left at the altar. Yeah. Uh, ain't the bride this time. <laughs> uh, well, usually it's the... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, well, runaway bride was an exception. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in this case. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the king heads off and the the priest also heads off to follow the king in order to stop them from doing something sacrilegious, which is... Mm. And eventually, so, and Marie gets onto a horse that was probably by the... Doctor or the um, one of the musketeers and yeah. heads off down to nice to yeah. the um, cliffs of wherever that yeah. the, those cliffs. cliffs are. Yeah, whatever. Where to wait for the mermaid, which she does, and she eventually arrives there. And her father and his musketeers and the priest arrive there, and she tries to tell the tells the king that to if she do, if he does not cease this um, killing the mermaid, she'll. 
he'll, you know, killing the mermaid. And if he does not, um, if she does, if he does kill it, she dies. And but if she lets the mermaid li live, it might save her life because she's gonna jump off the yeah, um, yeah, cliff there. Yeah, she's gonna there. jump off the cliff, and she's gonna need the mermaid to save her life when she gets down the bottom. Yeah, so. We're left, it's a long way down. Yeah, this is a, um, another catch twenty two type of thing. Yeah. If if he doesn't do this, he's going to lose her, mm. and so he has to prove his love to or for his daughter. For his daughter, so she quickly jumps into the water, and the musketeers had their pistols ready and thinking, waiting for the king's order, and eventually the king tells him to stand down and all yeah. that, and. Uh, the mermaid heals both Marie and the captain. And they slip, they sail away. Yeah, and of course, um, the musketeers, the ki Mr. the king, 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 tells the musketeers <laughs> to signal to the ships that were blocking the uh, other so ship, so, so they signal, can, yeah. so they can head off on to parts. The next adventure. <laughs> yeah, and of course, the king is the is a um, bit. Um, happy that he saved his daughter and the priest tells him you are not only a good great. king but now you are a good great, great man no, not a great king but also a great man because he made the right decision yeah he did instead of being a selfish prick I mean um, a selfish oh, king said that. He, <laughs> yeah anyway um, I guess um, if my, much like much later, they arrive at a supposedly at the site where probably Atlantis is at, and, and the, where the mermaid's home is. Supposedly lives there because they they got a telepathic link somehow, rather. Right? Yeah, they soon arrive there, and Marie dives in, and the mermaid, her friend, gives her a guided tour yeah. of Atlantis. Oh, by the way, when she's with the mermaid, she can breathe underwater. Okay, just before, just in case someone's asking. How can she breathe underwater? Well, yeah, there you go then. Uh, yeah. Go. So, Answer your question. <laughs> so the story is ended there. Okay, it sees it sees it land us in all its glory. It's very pretty. Very nice. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Elon Musk could actually take people down there instead of to Mars. It'd be uh, cheaper. Uh, mm. It will be interesting to find out if what they say about um, the ocean whether there is a light under the ocean. No, there would be. Because, um, you know, remember in um, down in the centre of the Earth, mm -hmm. the one with James Mason in it, when it went down there, uh, down underneath the ground there, and those electric generating light thingies, uh, those lamps, I know. started playing up. They said, turn your lamps, lamps off. Mm -hmm. And then when they turned the lamps off, the uh, fluorescent um, lumin luminescence, whatever, of the bacteria or algae or whatever, on the walls, mm. generate light. Yeah. Cold light. Yeah, they have it nowadays. Glow worms and stuff. So there might be something like that in the bottom of the sea. Yes. Yeah. There you go. That's so, your science lesson. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's the story of the king's daughter. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I do like it when we called the Duke Ducky. Well, he wasn't much of a duck. A duke. Mm. Um, he wasn't, yeah, he's he's more a duck on the glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Uh, okay. Well, maybe uh, I couldn't even call it a gosling because that's a goose. No, that would make no, sense. No, it's a gooseling. No, du duckling, a gooseling, oh, whatever. Anyway, um, I won't go into all production notes here about who do what to whom over so many, so many buddy years, but pretty much it's the whole, whole concert started in 1999 and finally hit the, uh, the theatres in 2022. That's a long haul in anyone's language. Yeah, um, it's a long haul. I mean, but we take, getting on to a couple of location bits. So, uh, the principal photography, the photography began in April two thousand and fourteen at the Palace of Versailles in France, and after about two weeks shooting there, they came to Australia. Oh yeah, and, Melbourne. Yeah, uh, Melbourne, and they did some uh, shooting down there. In the Dockland Studio in Melbourne, and on location in the Melbourne area. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, so that's good. I mean, we do get a lot of things made out here. Yeah. But people don't know they get made out here. Look, Matrix. Some Matrix has been made out, made out here, or all of them. I don't know. Some. I know some of them have. Some of them have. Thor's been made out here. Some some of the parts of the Caribbean have been made out here. At least one of them. Mm. Uh, just down the road from here. So we are getting things being made here, and they're going well. Um, I just wish we had a strong film industry in Australia like they do in America. Yeah, I wish they did yeah. too. 
Anyway, um, whatever. Reception. There's not too much to go on because it's too early in the piece. But basically, um, it's average to poor um, reviews, but I think it's only because no one's reviewed it that much yet. Yeah, it's probably only. And just... the people who are reviewing it don't like fantasy. Well, well no, well, that's what happened. No, if, if you get people who are voting on something, like, you know, let's take Rotten Tomatoes. If the people who are doing their voting and critiques on it, on their site, don't like fancy movies, they're not going to give the good rating. Hmm. Okay? Um, and if it's not a well-known one? Well, it doesn't matter if it's a well-known one. It's brand new. And based on so many critiques, what happens is, if, they, if the people on that site don't particularly like fancy movies, they're not going to grade it higher. But I've only got three, yeah. three thingies here. One's Rotten Tomatoes, one's Metacritic. They've got a poor one as well. But audience polled by Post Track gave the film 66% positive score, with 33% of people saying they would definitely recommend the film. Hmm. So honestly, too early to call it from the uh, the critiques uh, because the ones that are coming through possibly don't like fantasy. Or, or this type of movie. Uh, and the major players haven't actually said anything yet. Or mm -hmm. not that I can find. Now, here we go. Drum roll. Availability. Oh. This is a bit on the new side. I looked at Amazon. It's rentable. But there's no stock at the moment. At the moment, it says, oh, it's out of stock. And eBay doesn't have any stock at all. Which means um, Amazon's got the rental at the moment, but mm. the hard copies haven't come out. Well, when I say hard copies, you know, the ones you can buy uh, aren't available yet. You still, you will be able to buy it on DVD and Blu-ray, mm. but they're just not available just yet. So you may want to uh, at least go on um, YouTube, pick up the trailer, uh, or have a go at watching the um, the rental. Oh, look Prime. at this, mate. Yep. Um, and not so um, interesting film fact. Um, okay. Um, it was actually filmed in the real Palace of Versailles. Yeah, I said that. It, where they did the dance sequence with the um, I mirrors. said they did some filming in France. And I know, but it's kind of cool because in this one, yeah. they had to film it at night when the well, tourists, the tourists were around, around and yeah. struggled to finish it up till 5.30 a.m. Exactly. That would have been hard. Well, yeah. Okay, before I mean, the tourists uh, start again. That's true. I mean, it probably started at 9 o'clock in the morning. But most of the balls and stuff were held at night anyway. That's true. And, and, when, and when they were walking around outside, they could, and there were gardens and stuff, they weren't actually there. They were somewhere else. Mm. Ah. But the inside shots of the, at the palace, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would like yeah. to go to Versailles. I mean, it seems very pretty. Eh, I want to go back to Italy. Eh. I just think of the eh. idea of looking at those fountains there. They look really awesome. And checking out their huge ballroom, even though they haven't had. I don't know if they still do balls in, in. Oh, the, the, those the, the places. Space, probably do still do balls and big uh, gala events or whatever, but yeah. not for us little folk. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned them. Um, they probably still do that, but they won't allow an ordinary person to come in there. Oh no, they wouldn't. You're, we're ordinary. We're plebs. We're nobody important. We're the scum of the earth. We're serfs. Whatever. Uh, what oh, we're still royals in our own way. Well, I'm royal. We're ish, Royal Stevensons. Ish, ish. <laughs> We're Royal Stevenson family. Isn't that royal enough for you? Hey, my grandmother was a nanny who worked for some rich people. That, that makes... No, there you go. Yeah. Well, she could have... No, I was going to say, she could have had sex with the guy in the household, no, which yeah, could have made care. my mother, she was the older... And then I was like, yeah, it could be. I could be the illegitimate grandson of somebody, you know? No. No, there you go. Whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It was, it's a dream. I think this movie is a really worthwhile one to see. It, 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 it is an action-adventure fantasy. Yes. Okay. Um, I got to whenever so I think it, of it, this... It, it, it fits the criteria quite yeah. nicely. It's... it's, it's okay, but, I mean, the story's not too bad. I, mean, I don't like fantasies yeah. like this myself, okay? But I can't find anything wrong with the storyline. Yeah, it it makes works me... for me. It all, it's coherent. 
Yeah. It makes me yeah. think of that um, I Am Dragon movie we reviewed. Well, actually, I Am Dragon was a little bit more pro. Uh, a bit Which, harder because all in foreign language. Yeah, but the story in, was possibly yeah, bad. Considering yeah. that. It was came from a uh, European was country. It Russia or something, was it? No, mm. Scandinavia. I can't I think remember. It was Russia. Yeah, where, what, whatever. And, mm. and as I said before, it's the one. It's the one of those movies that you don't. That, that that's rare, but at the same time, you you. It's not an over. It's not a mainstream movie, but yeah, it is a bit of a mainstream. But the problem is, um, people but just don't. It's on the cusp. It. It's, it's borderline. It's, it's not quite an A movie. It's not quite an art house. It's sort of yeah. But this one here, I think this one would go really good in mainstream theatre okay. if if it was advertised, promoted properly, so the people who like fantasies would understand what the movie was going to be about, so they actually go and see the blasted thing. Yeah, yeah. action adventure fantasy film. Well, what I think action adventure. It was pushed as action adventure. There's not enough action and adventure in it. Yeah, it's more of a fancy film. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, more yeah, of fantasy, yeah. I believe too, because yeah. um, there was no there was no sword fighting. There was a few gun sh- shooting yeah. bits so, here yeah, and there. To me, it's but more just a straight fantasy story. It was yeah, yeah it's a straight fantasy story. Maybe a little bit of drama adventure thrown in. in. Yeah. Thrown in. A romance drama. Yeah, yeah, a bit of rain. So yeah, so if they advertise it right, you get more people in theatre. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, another point too, obviously, it might not do very good at the theatre, but it might go really good in home media. Mm, you know, go rentals, DVDs, Blu-rays, whatever. Yeah, so yeah. Who knows? Too early to tell. I think it's a good movie. Not my style of movie though, but again, I don't, I don't review movies purely on what I want to do. Uh, but I'll still give it about a nine to nine and a half based on the work put into it, the acting, storyline, costume, the whole lot. It makes a fine movie if you're into that sort of movie. Mm. If you're into slasher movies, I wouldn't bother. I'd dive five past it to take a wide berth around it, detour. But anyone who likes adventure, fantasy type films, I think you'd like it. What do you reckon? I reckon. Yeah. So that's what's our your, verdict. What's your score? So let's rate what's this. What's your score? I said one already. I said nine okay. and a half. Okay. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to give this um, nine and a half two. I thought it was pretty cool. And yeah. I I would have rated higher, but I feel like that nine and a half is a, is a good enough. I rate. know. You, that, if if Pierce Bros had sung a song, you'd give another half point. No. Oh, no. No. As I said before, um, <laughs> some actors may not be able to sing. Some and actors, well, no, 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 and no, no. while Sorry. most of them may be theatre actors, and theatre acting acting could be their strength at the times at the beginning, and then it went on to acting in a movie and yada yada, etc. It, not all actors have to be singers. And he's not. No. <laughs> so, so well, it's, it's not take the... Hey, we're taking the piss out of Pierce. No. Ah, piss well, out of oh, he, maybe he's... Um, he sorry, did, Mr. Brockman. Maybe once upon a time he did do sing, but it was not his strength. But no, he's, he's a good man who can act, but no, I don't... Yeah, he, may not have, he may never have actually sang when he was younger. Mm. If he did, it might not have been great, but yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, mm. uh, they all did come, either came from acting colleges or acting and schools. And they can sing a bit and sometimes. some of them yeah. either came off stage and went on to becoming but, big theatres. But the first thing I saw Pierce Brosnan was Remington Steel, mm. and they got him for, for eye candy. <laughs> of course, he looked pretty damn good in that show. Yeah, he my was. Mother, uh, no, my mother, my, my wife, she, she had the hots for him. Mm. <laughs> I thought he was pretty yeah, cool, and yeah. I thought he stole the show. Or, t- or t- yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that was he a did. problem at the last well, that, season. Well, that was the problem. The lady, uh, something symbolist. Yeah, remember, um, I think she came from um, her. Yeah, yeah, she she had a father who. Efren Zimbalist Jr. Probably. Yeah, yeah. and mm. and she thought that she had a bigger, well, higher claim no, than well, Pierce. She was the main star. Yeah, for a while. He was supposed to be the co-star, and he became more popular, and he the, he either became equal. To her, or Over. he he became more important than she was. Well, he did steal a show, as he I did. said before. Very talented man. Yeah, I mean, sorry, Pierce. I'm not, sorry about the singing. Sorry. I mean, yeah. he's female eye candy. You can't expect the the um, yeah. the guys to have um, her in their dreams. Was he wasn't bad looking? Yeah, she had good legs. Yeah. I'm just joking. I don't know. I can't remember now, but I don't remember she's a, a, a rather attractive woman. Yeah, but I mentioned not too many guys are into the but whole you look at course. Back, yeah, they but like look the eye too. But look at that. You got had Remington Steel back in those days. You had Pierce Brosnan and I think it's Stephanie Zimbal. I, I think it's the first name. And then on the other side of the coin, you had uh, Moonlighting, 
with what's it? Who's it? Um, oh. Yeah. Oh lord. But I think that uh, yeah. I think Metal when, when it uh, comes to <laughs> Pierce Brosnan in Remington Steel, I think men, men envied him because he's an eye catch, and women liked him because he was eye candy. That's the big difference. No, I think you mean the guy, so how you suave and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and you get you get the girls. Because yeah, that sort of stuff. Because yeah. he's good looking and. A bit like Lucifer. Mm, he had that look about him and cheekiness and everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guys may not be, think he's a hottie. They're not but, gay or but, anything, no, but they. But they, they think, hey, wouldn't it be good to be like him. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, you get the women. Yeah, mm. they wouldn't be eye candy for yeah. Zara. That's Zara, a different thing. Yeah. They wouldn't be um, love gushing over her. Who? They want to. They want to. They envy Pierce Brosnan's appearance and want to be that man. Oh well, yeah, I don't envy now. <laughs> Maybe not now, but years ago, it, it, it would, than me. It, would yeah, been, yeah. it would have been a um, men's fa- you know dream of being him in James Bond or Remington Steel. Yeah, somewhere. Anyway, I'm gonna call it quits. I'm yeah. in pain here at the moment. Yes, yeah, sorry guys. I had an operation today, so yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed um, this latest review, and I yeah. hope you guys may check it out when it does get re-released. Hmm? Not, not really what? released. I mean, if they get, they sell more of the um, these uh, these um, on DVD or video. No, I haven't released them properly yet. I mean, it's only available to rent at the moment through okay. Amazon, and there are maybe some other sources, but okay, I don't think they've actually released a hard copy part. Well, through should. the digital media, I don't. Yeah, that there might be that might be another week or two away. Yeah, but yeah, by all means, go on Amazon or somewhere else. You might have it, uh, rent a copy, and I think you'll enjoy it if you're into fantasy adventures. Yeah, yes. if you're into that um, that genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think. Will be but it's more fantasy than act, and that, more fantasy than adventure. Yeah, and yeah. while it may have historic figures in it, if you're into that yeah. sort of thing, it's not a historic related movie either. Or no, it's another point too. It is it, having the King Louis the Fourteenth and that in Versailles. It actually sort of has a sense of reality about it. Yeah. And the, uh, the even not the and William yeah. um, Hurt's character. He's a real um, he's a real priest that he's portraying too. So okay, that, didn't know that. Yeah, so yeah, so they, they, they always had a pre- resident priest or a bishop or somebody living there. I read somewhere that yeah. he was a bit of a the um, the yeah. sort of the. King Louis, um, advisor. Advi- well, not advisor. He's the guy who he confesses to. Yeah, yeah what well, father, confessor, whatever. Confessor, private confessor, whatever. Yeah. You did what? I'm not going to forget that one. <laughs> yeah, we have the one. Yeah. Anyway, I imagine that. <laughs> so, guys, <Again. laughs> um, thanks for listening to our latest podcast, everyone. Yeah. And I hope you guys may um, check us out for our next one, whenever that might be. Well, a couple days long. Yes. Yeah, so have a good. Um, um, night, everyone, and I hope you guys enjoyed this um, episode. Here we go. So, Listen, dreams. so this is Sarah <laughs> Stevenson and Michael saying unpleasant dreams. <laughs> See you next time, guys. Bye.